If you don't throw yourself in the water, you're never going to learn to swim. What are you trying to say, Pastor? I'm, saying, I'm trying to say that you as a young man, you need to open your mouth. You need to worship God. You need to express to God what he is. And then he will manifest himself to you. Amen. It's time that we start to wake up. Realize that living for Jesus is the greatest gift that God has given us. And most young people just don't seem to get it. I know it. I, I know I see it all the time. But it is the greatest pleasure. It is the most exciting life is to live for Jesus. There's something new every day. Something all the time happens that are new. I was, I, I, I was just, I think it was two weeks ago. I'm not sure. I was painting this, this uh, table in my backyard. And I had these, uh, you know, the headphones on. And, and I was worshiping the Lord. And I was listening to music. But then this song came in. Lord, I, you know, I, you know and, and it came on, and I, be, I just forgot myself. And I began to worship God and just worship God, began to speak in tongues. And all of a sudden, at, I turned to the side, and I noticed all these people that they were in, in this porch, and they were all like this. I mean, I began to speak in tongues, man. Praise God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. This is a Bible study, right? Okay. No, I'm not. I'm, I told my wife, I don't want to sweat today. Because every time I go preach, I come home like a, a fountain full of water. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to try to be as calm as I can. Holy Spirit, help me. But if you touch me, Lord, so be it. Let it be your will, Lord God. Would you, first of all, I want to thank God for being here and all of you. And also want to thank the pastor of this church who's a good friend of mine. He's graduating again. Is that what it is? How many graduations this guy's going to have? I mean, I feel like uh, I got to go back to school or something. Try to catch up to him or something. I don't know, you know. But I'm so thankful that Pastor Bob is a good friend of mine. Pastor Tom, his wife, and all the, all the, the family here. We're home today, amen? Praise God. Would you please open your Bibles with me? Like I said, I'm going to be as calm as I can. First Samuel. Chapter 17, and we're going to start in verse 41. And I know that you're going to put it up on a, on a, on a billboard here. You're going to put it up there for me? Amen. Praise God. I just want to bring a word that of encouragement to you that your giant is going to fall. No matter how big he is, no matter how prepared he is, it doesn't matter how many weapons he has. We have the greatest weapon. His name is Jesus. Amen? I mean, the, Lord, the Bible says that the name of Jesus is so powerful that demons shake. <laughs> Can you believe that? I mean, when I mention Jesus, demons just fly. They just take off because they, they, they can't stay around. Too powerful. Praise God. And you have that powerful name to use against the giants that raise up trying to destroy you. Amen. This is what the word of the Lord says. Verse 41 says, And the Philistine came and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. Not only he was not, a, he himself went, but he had a man that was a, a shield barrier. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. In other words, he made fun of him. Gave him no value. See, that, that, that's how the world looks at you sometimes. But what they don't understand, that there is a supernatural power inside of us. Amen? They don't see it. But heaven sees it. Amen? And it says, he disdained him, for he was but a youth. Look at that. Youth. A young man. A young man who had a tremendous experience with the Lord already before he got there. Tremendous experiences. A rudy and a fair countenance. Verse 43, please. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. In other words, he tried to intimidate David. That's how the enemy does it. He tries to intimidate you. 
But he's a liar. Jesus said, you've been a liar from the beginning. All you say is lies. And the Philistine said, come to me and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. That's pretty intimidating. Let me tell you something. According to statistics, there are some theologians that believe that this guy either was nine feet tall or 13 feet four inches. I mean, I, the other day, I, I went to look up and see uh, 14 feet. I said, well, wow, this guy, his head must have probably hit the ceiling here. I mean, this guy was humongous. Just, just to look at something like that is enough to intimidate you, right? But the Bible says we live by faith and not by what we see. Oh, I like that. <laughs> you see, it doesn't matter. Here I go. Here I go. It don't matter how big it is. It doesn't matter how intimidating it looks. There's something in me. There's something in you that has conquered hell. Death and heaven belongs to us and he's on our side and he said I will never forsake you I will never leave you I will be with you forever I will fight the battle for you yeah, here I go here I go come down man. Look, 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 look at David look, a young man a young man like you guys over there yeah like you guys, no difference. Flesh and blood, just like you guys. You know what I'm saying? Had to deal with friends like you guys deal with friends. David, you really believe that God is on your side? Yes, I do. <laughs> He's proved it to me so many times. Hallelujah. You see, God can only use people in public when they've been used in a secret place. You understand what I'm saying? You see, before God can use you in public, first God wants to use you in the closet, <laughs> in your prayer closet, when nobody's looking at you, when nobody sees you, when no one is there to applaud you, but God is there. Amen. And he said, David to the Philistine, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee. See, I'm not coming in my own power. You see, I'm not going against you in my own knowledge. It's not how much training I have. Hallelujah. It's not based in my training. It's based on the God that's in me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I come in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou has defied. Hallelujah. Verse 46, please. This day, that's called faith. <laughs> See, after it's happened, then come here and say, the Lord did this. And, wow. Hey, that's already passed, my friend. I want you to speak like that before it happens. See, David, he didn't care how big this guy was. It didn't matter how many armament he had, how big his... They say that just, just the, his lance, the head of the lance, was 20 pounds. David said, that's nothing, man. All I need is a, all I need is a rock named Jesus. <laughs> just, I'm going to pick five, but I'm just going to need one. <laughs> Woo! That's so cool. This world is cool, and you think that this world is in? Let me tell you something. Jesus is in. <laughs> He's cool. He's the coolest. Hallelujah. And this day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee. Take thy head from thee. Hallelujah. And I will give it to the carcass of the hosts of the Philistines this day unto. Not only was he. Not only was he challenging the, the, the Goliath, he was challenging the whole army. <laughs> One young man, he said, the whole, bring them, bring them all. Hallelujah. 
He said, the armies are going to fall. Not only you, but the armies that you are representing are going to fall. Let me tell you something. The armies of the devil, they know they defeat it. You see, they just don't want to admit it. But when they find somebody like David, they start to shake. Hallelujah. And in the wild of the beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. One of the things that God wants to let this world know is that in you, people can know who Jesus is. Amen. Can you go to the next verse? We're almost there. The verse that I want to use as my theme of this teaching. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord save it, <laughs> not with a sword and a spear, for battle is of the Lord's, and he will give you, hallelujah, unto my hand, hallelujah. Jesus said, whatever you ask, believing you will receive. Jesus said, if you have faith as a little mustard seed, you will turn to this mountain and said, mountain, get out of there. Pull yourself up from there. Throw yourself in the ocean. That's the kind of faith that God is looking for. It's not how big, oh my God. It's not how much you know. It's who you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. And all the assembly shall know that the Lord saveth with not the sword and the spear. For the battle is the Lord's. And he will give you into our hands hallelujah you see david wasn't just fighting for himself he was fighting for the nation see he, he just didn't want to look good for himself no, he wanted the whole nation to see hallelujah that the god that they serve has not changed hallelujah can you go to the next verse please hallelujah and it came to pass when the philistine arose and came and unite to meet david that David hasted and ran away from the army of the Philistines. No, 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 no. That's not what it says here. It says, and David hasted, ran towards it. <laughs> he went in the direction of the giant. Most Christians today are doing the other way. They're going the other way. They're turning their back on the enemy. Be careful because when you turn your back on your enemy, there's no protection. See, the breastplate is here. You know, you know something? The sword of the spirit is here. Hallelujah. The helmet of salvation is here. Yeah, the, the shoes, hallelujah, of peace is there. But when you turn your back on the enemy, there's no protection. See, that's why we as Christians, as children of God, we must never, never be intimidated how big the enemy is, how, how, what he says to you, how much he says to you. It doesn't matter. What matters is that this word, hey, it's not him that dictates the rules. It is God that dictates the rule. Hallelujah. And guess what? What's in the contract is already done and done and done. It's settled. You don't have to listen to the enemy. He's a liar. The dictates is here. I am a conqueror. He who is in me, hallelujah, is greater than he that's in the world, hallelujah. Hey, the contract says I'm the winner, hallelujah. The dictates have already been settled. It's not what the enemy says that's going to happen. It's what God says is going to happen. Amen. And then I, I love it. I love it. I want to use it as a theme. Running towards your giants. See, when you run towards your giant, he doesn't get any smaller. But I tell you, your faith gets bigger. Hello, hello. See, when you run towards the giant, hallelujah, he doesn't get any smaller. He continues to be bigger, hallelujah. But your faith uh, rises up in you, and all of a sudden, that giant becomes an ant in your presence because your faith, hallelujah. The Bible says, without faith, you cannot please God. The Bible says, faith is the, the essence of things not seen, but I know that they are, hallelujah. Oh, David said, listen, you, God is going to give me in your hand. Hallelujah. See, David ran towards the giant. When you run towards the giant, the giant will run from you. 
Let me say it again. When you run towards your giant, your giant will run from you. And if he doesn't run, he will surely be slain. Amen. My brother, it doesn't matter how much knowledge we have. It doesn't matter how long our journey is in Christ, how spiritual I am, how intimate I am with God. Sooner or later, you will have to confront giants. The Bible says, tell me a little bit about David. The Bible says that his dad, Jesse, said to David, David, go on to the field where the battle is. Bring some bread, bring some corn to your brothers. Isn't it good that God always has his son to give us the victory? See, who sent David? It was his father. Who sent Jesus, David? The, oh, it was his father. Hallelujah. God always is ready to send his son to give us victory. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. You see, it's, it, whether you like it or not, as a Christian, hallelujah, you will have to confront giants. You see, it, it doesn't matter how spiritual you are. It doesn't matter how much you know the Bible. You know it doesn't matter how many experiences you've had with God. The fact is that they will rise up against you. The Bible says that David said, wait a minute. Who is this uncircumcised heathen that's defiled the armies of the living God? Who is he? And the Bible says that David said, I will go and fight him. They brought David to, to the king, which the king, the Bible says, was trembling. The whole nation of Israel, the whole armies of Israel, they shook in their boots. They were afraid. You see, the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, of power, and of sound mind. It is enough. Church, let's stand up. Let's raise up and look the giant in the face and say, today you will fall. I don't know the giant that you're facing. Maybe it's cancer. Maybe it's a son that does not want nothing to do with God. A husband that doesn't want to do that. It doesn't matter. Why don't you just keep your eyes on the promise and forget about the problem. The promise will take care of the problem. Hallelujah. It's not the enemy that dictates the end. It's God that dictates it. The last word comes from our Lord. Stop worrying about the problem. Stop worrying about how big the problem is. Oh, look at all the armament that he has. He looks so dangerous. He's been trained since a child. It doesn't matter. I don't live by what I see. I live by faith. And this word tells me that I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm sweating. Hallelujah. I'm sweating. And the Bible says that King Saul, his spiritual life was not too good anymore. You see, this is what happens when your spiritual life is not in tune with God. The giant becomes a real giant to you. But someone that lives in the presence of God, who has a relationship with God, who has experiences with God, the giant is just another experience that God will be glorified. Just another experience that God will bring himself glory. The Bible says that King Saul said to David, you're ridiculous, you're crazy, are you out of your mind? The Bible says he ridicules it. Can't go against this guy. He's been trained since a child. In fact, the Bible calls him a champion. That's until he didn't meet the real champion. <laughs> and the Bible says, you can't go against this guy. This guy's been trained. He's a warrior. This guy can fight. David said, no problem. What do you mean no problem? You see, let me tell you something. I, I have experiences also. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, when I was taking care of the sheep of my father, hallelujah, when I was taking care of them, a lion would come and try to steal one of them away, would try to kill one of them, the, 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 and I would pounce on them. Let me think about this. Think about it. A young man 
confronting a lion. This guy's got to be lying. This can't be real true. He said, oh, yeah. And when it came to take one of my sheep, because I am a shepherd and I love the sheep. He who loves the sheep will give their lives for the sheep. Oh, church, hallelujah. There's a man of God in this place who's willing to give their life for you. I know what he cries with me. He loves people. He loves souls. He's willing to die for the sheep. And he said, when the sheep came after me, I mean, when the lion came after me, I just destroyed him. And then there was a bear. Man, listen to me. A bear. <laughs> if I seen a bear coming at me, I, I mean, this young man just didn't, he, you see, it didn't bother him. You see, he, 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 was, he, was, he was basing himself not on his stature. He was basing himself in the presence of God in his life. Hallelujah. He said, I've, hey, hey, I, hey I, I've dealt with this. He said, you see, it's no, this guy is no different than the lion. He's no different than the bear. If I destroyed them, hallelujah, and I did it because the power of God in my life, this guy's going to be the same way. Finally, David said, okay. I mean, uh, Saul said, okay, go ahead. What are you trying to say, Pastor? Before you can slay giants in public, you must first slay giants in the presence of God alone. You must have experiences with the Lord. See, that's the problem with the church today. They don't have experiences with God in their rooms, in their houses. They don't seek the Lord. They have no intimacy. And without intimacy, they are not going to be able to confront the giants that will raise up against them. Because when you have a relationship with God, when you have intimacy with God, you begin to know that the God that you serve is all powerful. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know the story. David slew the giant with a simple rock named Jesus. Praise God. I mean, this guy was so big. How could he miss? I mean, if this dude was three feet high, he must have had a good David said, I can't miss. I just can't miss, Lord. With the Holy Spirit, just take that rock and boom. The Bible says it went inside his skull and he fell down. Hallelujah. Your enemy is about to fall down. Your giant, that cancer is about to be slain hallelujah you've got to believe the bible says by your stripes we are healed the bible says i give you power i give you. jesus cannot lie the enemy tries to intimidate you the enemy lies to you and says you can't do it nobody's gonna be healed pray people don't get it i don't care i'm just gonna obey god if they get healed or not that's not my problem i'm gonna do what god tells me to do i'm gonna pray for them It doesn't matter how many experiences you had. It doesn't matter how much you know the word of God. Some way, somehow, the enemy will come against you. Giants will rise. And I want to tell you about three giants that I believe that if we don't slay these giants as children of God, this giant is going to slay us. Three of them. Real quickly. The first giant that I believe is a great giant is called the world. You see, the world and all its desires, all its passions is trying to rob of the presence of God. It's a humongous giant. You see, the world tells you this. This is what the world says. Today, if you feel like a man, you go to the men's bathroom. Tomorrow, if you feel like a woman... You go to the ladies' room. That's what the world is. You see, this is a big giant. See, the world says, listen, that child in, 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 your, in your belly, you can kill it. No problem. It's your body. You do whatever. No, no. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is a gift from God. And Jesus said, he who kills the body, he who destroys the temple, I will destroy him. 
See, the world says it's okay. Go to a club. Get drunk. It's okay to go to strip. strip. It's okay. The world offers you all of that. But the Bible says, if you love the world, you become an enemy of God. I'm not making it up. Open your Bibles, please, in James. I believe this is a great giant, and it is slinging a lot of Christians in our day. See, the world says it's okay. You don't have to marry her. All you have to is live. That's what the world says. See how the world makes it so easy? The pleasures of the world, the lusts of the world. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to live. You don't have to get married. That's old stuff. That's old school. You see? Just live with her. You don't know how many couples that had have to marry them because they were living together. Thank God they repented. They said, I want to, I said, I want to straighten my life out. Isn't that wonderful when I see two people that want to do things right? Look what the Bible says. Hallelujah. Could you please put it up there, James? James chapter 4, verse 4. Hallelujah. James 4. We are in a Bible study, right? Okay, so we're going to learn. The first giant. I believe this is a great giant. It's not the, the biggest, but I believe it's pretty big. It says like this. Ye adulteresses and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? In other words, when you become a friend of this world, when you do what the world wants you to do, you see, when you, when you give yourself over to the passions of the world, desires of the world, the lusts of the world, you become an enemy of God. But, but pastor, but I live in the world. Jesus said, yeah, you live in it, but you're not from it. <laughs> see, that's the difference. Hallelujah. You see, I was bought with the blood of Christ. He paid for me. I don't belong to myself anymore. This world doesn't belong to me. It's crucified to me. And I am crucified to the world. Hallelujah. Praise God. He said, adultery. Listen, he's talking. This was a church that was backsliding. Did you know that? This was a church that was going back to the old covenant. Leaving the grace of God and going back under the law. Which the Bible says no one is justified by the law. You see? Look, adulterers and adulterers, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. And Matthew, we don't have to put up there, it says, Matthew 16 verse 1, it says, Oh, what worth a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul. Everything is temporal. Everything, that car you have, it's only a little while. One day it's going to be rotted out. That home that you have, it'll fall down one day. It don't matter. Everything that we have in this world, God has given for us to use but not cling on to it because these things are temporal but eternal life is temporal jesus said he who does the will of my father will live forever the world if you don't slay this giant called the world and its passions its desires lasciviousness of the world Loudness of the world. You know, the Bible says, in fact, it's going to say, say that, humble yourselves. Humble yourselves. You see, 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 God loves to do this. He just loves to do this. He likes people that are so small, that are so humble, that people look at you. Why? Because it is for the glory of God. Now what? Go to the next verse, please. Go to the next verse. The first giant is the world. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in you has lusted? In other words, when you become a friend of this world, the Holy Spirit grieves himself. Because you're given over to the lusts of this world. Because we belong to him. You see, he doesn't want to share with us anybody else. It is. Hallelujah. Go to the next verse, please. Hallelujah. Look what it says. But he giveth more grace. 
Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud. Where is the proud people in the world? They're full of themselves. The more money they have, the more power they think they got. But in reality, they don't have nothing. The Bible says, what worth of a man that he gains the whole world? What is he going to give for his soul? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. God resists the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. God likes to take little things to defy the big things. Hallelujah. The foolish things of this world, they can fund the wise. Hallelujah. But listen, when you think about it, think about a whole army. With all the armament that they have. Looked at a young man confronting a giant. This guy was 13 feet, 4 inches. He had 300 pounds of armor on top of him. You know what I'm saying? That's how this guy was. Imagine when you look, what did his brother say? You know, you're trying to show off. You come here to show off, David. I know why you came here. You want to show yourself off? David said, no, no, no. You got it all wrong, brother. You got it all. You are here to show off. Because the Bible says the brothers were. But David was a young man. You look at it and you say, this guy is going to be devoured. In fact, I think the brothers must have said, keep your mouth shut. Because man, you're going to make this guy mad. And he's going to come and defy the whole Israel. But David, hallelujah, which looked like did mean nothing to anybody. But God loves to use people like that. So that those, the great ones, those that think that they are, those that are proud, will be foolish in the eyes of God. See, God takes the foolish things to confound the wise. He takes the weak things, hallelujah. Those that we don't give no value to it. You know what I'm saying? See, God loves to do that. Why? Because his name is the one that should be glorified. And David was glorifying God. He said, I'm not coming on my own power. I'm coming in the power of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resist the proud, but give the grace unto the humble. Next verse, please. Hallelujah. Look what it says. S Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The first giant that I believe, whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter how much experience you have with God. It doesn't matter how long your journey has been with the Lord. You're going to confront him. It's called the world. There's another big giant. I believe this guy is a great big giant. His name is the devil. That's the second giant. Whether you like it or not, the Bible says he will come for a season, he will tempt you for a season, and he will leave, but he'll come back again. Somewhere or somehow, it doesn't matter. It's not if he's going to show up, he will show up. That's a humongous giant, Satan. A great, I believe it's one of the greatest giants that you confront every day. But I'm, I don't believe it's the, the biggest giant. That's my own opinion. That's my own opinion. I'm not saying it's a biblical thing. I'm, not, I'm saying my own opinion. He is a great giant. And the Bible says he comes to destroy and kill. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't come for anything. He steals, destroys, and kills. That's what this giant does. That's what he's trained to do. Jesus said, you're a liar. You're a murderer from the beginning. You don't know anything else. You just do what's natural that comes to you. Great giant. The devil. But I know how to defeat him. <laughs> I know how to slay that giant. How do I do it? How, do I, how can I slay the giant, the devil, that tempts me? I'll tell you how right here. Look what it says. Submit yourselves, therefore. Now, I went to look at the word submission. It means to be yourself under. It means to obey. That's the problem. You don't know why so many Christians are being defeated by the devil. You know, this giant is just one of You know why? Because they refuse to submit to God. And in and, and, and military terms, it means to be under someone who's a leadership. Oh, hallelujah. How do I slay this giant, the devil? It's simple. 
So simple. Even a child can do it. Hallelujah. What does he have to do? Just submit to the Lord. And the Bible says resist the devil. In other words, go against it. In other words, run towards him. Don't run away from him, but run towards him like David did. And when you do that, he will flee. Oh, I like that. I like that. Hey, listen to me. I'm not going to run from the devil. The devil has to run from me. Why? Because in me, there is a God. Hallelujah. That is that has slain them on the cross of Calvary. But like a giant, he will try to intimidate you. I think I said this, I've talked about this experience that I had. That I'm not going to tell you his name, but a young man, the devil manifested him. And the devil spoke to her, through him to me, trying to intimidate me. See the giant? He said, I'm going to kill you, he said to me. I said, you're going to kill me? I said, you got it wrong. You got, all the, you got it the wrong way, buddy. It's the other way around. Because my Bible tells me that Jesus has the power of death and hell. You don't have... Oh, you see, that's how... That's the problem. Most Christians refuse to submit to God. That's why the enemy is slaying a lot of them. But when you know the word, when you know the God that you serve, hallelujah, and you know that he's all powerful, I know that the devil is powerful. I know that. Don't play around with him. I don't play with him. I just submit to God, resist him, and he flees from me. Isn't that a beautiful thing? I mean, hey, 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 stop running from the devil. It's time that you take a stand and say, cancer, in the name of Jesus, you're going to have to go. Maybe no, I don't care, but you're going to go. I got a call from my doctor. I wasn't always this good looking. <sighs> At one time I was skinny, like you guys over there, beautiful. Now I got a little belly. I got a call from my doctor. Says, uh, "Mr. Rujo, you have a lot of fat around your liver. You need to come in so I can give you some uh, dietary. You know, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with it. But I told him I'm not going. I said, but you, I'm not going. I'm not going. To I'm not going to do it. I'm going to trust the God that I serve, and He will slay the giant." You see, that's crazy, Pastor. That's how I believe. If you believe different, I believe that my God can take care of me. I believe that my God can heal me. I believe that, that He can make it all right again. Hallelujah. And you know what? I'm almost 60 years old. I'm going to be 60 years old the 29th of August. And I'm I feel just as young as you guys. Maybe I can't jump as high as you guys, but I can still do a lot. Because I trust in God, He's my healer. He's my strength. Hallelujah. He's the one that renews me daily. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I know it's, a, it's humongous. Humongous giant the devil is. And he's slaying a lot of people. That's what he does. Jesus said he comes to steal, destroy, and kill. But you know what? When the stronger man comes in, when the stronger man comes in, I don't know. He ties the strong one and he takes everything. Oh, that's Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, let God dominate your life. Hallelujah. And when he dominates your life, all the giants that come against you will be slain. Even the giant called Satan. He's powerful. He's intimidating. He's ugly. He brings death. He brings despair, but I have a God that gives me joy, gives me eternal life, that heals me, that gives me victory every single day of my life. I live a victorious life, not based on what I am, but based on who I have. The Bible says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil. In other words, hey, that's it. Enough is enough. That cancer has to go. That child that doesn't want nothing to do with God has to come to the Lord. The Bible says, if you believe, you and your whole house shall be saved. 
I'm facing a giant, believe me. I'm facing a giant just like you. I got two children, two young men. They play, they sing, they have beautiful voices, but they're not living for God. But that doesn't stop me from believing that God will slay the giant. Amen. I will have the victory sooner or later. Victory is mine. The devil, tremendous, tremendous, tremendous giant. But it's so easy to, to dislay him. So submit to God. Resist him. And the Bible says he will flee from you. Go to the next verse, please. Hallelujah. Look, look, look. look. See, this is, this is their idea. Draw unto God. Hallelujah. You see, you want to slay that giant, the devil? Get closer to the Lord. The more you walk with God, the more the giant's going to be destroyed. Look, it says, draw night unto God and he will draw unto you. Cleanse your hands, sinners. He's talking to sinners here. He's talking to people that are living in sin, that the devil is destroying them. He said, if you just submit to me and resist them and you clean your hands, this, this year cleanse your hands, meaning stop doing things that are wrong. Not going home and washing under the faucet. No, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about stop stealing, stop hurting people with your hands. Stop it. I'm not talking. I know you guys are Christians, but the reality there's so many Christians that are doing that in church. Look what it says. Look, it says. Sinners and purify your hearts, ye double-minded double people. You know what that? You know what kind of people a double-minded person is? It's a person that's all, it's on the top of a wave. One day he's touching angels, oh, God. and next day he's got those things are bad. I don't know how you can't believe that. That's a person that's all. Today believes, tomorrow he doesn't believe. The Bible says we must always. It doesn't matter what we're going through. We might be going through the valley. We might be at the mountaintop. The same God of the mountaintop is that we are in the valley. He doesn't change. Maybe my feelings are different. Maybe I can feel the pain of what I'm going through. But God doesn't change. So my feelings has nothing to do with my faith. Because faith has nothing to do with faith. It is not based on how I feel. It is based on what God says. And if he said it, it shall be done. Hallelujah. But the last giant, and I'm going to end with this one. This one, every time I wake up, it's the first giant that I see in front of me. Who is he? <laughs> this thing here. I don't like it. I mean, the minute I get up from bed, I see him there. This guy just doesn't want to do things God's way. See, this flesh wants to lay down. I'd rather be laying down. Why do I have to go to church? The pastor's not going to be there today. It's going to be that crazy guy, that Portuguese crazy guy. He's going to be there. Who's going to listen to this guy? He's out of his mind. I might as well just stay home. See, that's the flesh. The flesh. <laughs> Look what the word of God says, my friend. Romans 8, please. And I will end with this. To me, to me, personally, that's the big. And I confront this giant every single day of my life. But I learned something. What did you learn, pastor? That I need to crucify this giant once and for all. This giant called the flesh loves pleasure for the flesh. Pleasure of the eyes. Looking at things that rob you of the presence of God. How many Christians today have lost sight of God because of the things that they are looking at? All because of the flesh. The lusts of the flesh, the desires of the eyes. Look what it says here. Please, Romans 8, verse 12, and I'm going to end here. I believe this is the greatest giant that I face every single day. Manny. Manny wants to do his own thing. 
But this man, he has to be crucified because he doesn't live anymore. Because Jesus lives in me. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, is a new, a new creature. The old has gone. The new. Hallelujah. Look what it says here. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors. You know, I owe something. <laughs> Do you understand? I am not. Oh, look, look. We are debtors not to the flesh. Hallelujah. The flesh cannot control me no more. This flesh has been crucified with Christ. I don't live, but Christ liveth in me. This flesh wants to stay at home and watch some filth. But God, hallelujah, has crucified my flesh. But I need to submit. Because if I don't want to, I can raise them up. Therefore, brethren, we have debtors not to the flesh. To live after the flesh. Verse 13, please. Hallelujah. The greatest giant that I face every day. And you're going to face it also. Hallelujah. For ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit mortify through the Spirit. Listen, there is the Spirit of God. It's not the Spirit of man. It's not a Spirit of the religiosity. It's the Spirit of God. Without the Spirit of God, it is impossible for you and me to crucify. We need the Spirit of God. Through the Spirit, do mortify the deed of the body. Ye shall live. Hallelujah. Continue. Go to the next verse, please. Look what it says. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. Not everybody is a child of God. I hate to tell you this. I know that the world says everybody's a child of God. No, we were created by God. But when we sin, we lost sonship. We need to come back to God. Hallelujah. And how do I know that I'm a, I'm a child of God? Because the Spirit of God tells me I don't need a pastor to tell me I don't need religion to tell me I'm a child of God the spirit of God tells me that you need to be convicted of who you are today I feel like a child of God tomorrow I don't know it's got nothing to do with feelings it's got something to do with the word of God Jesus said hey heaven and earth will pass away but my word will never pass away. will always be the same for as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. Verse 15, please. Hallelujah. For ye have not received the spirit of bond. In other words, a spirit of fear. Confront the devil. Confront this flesh. And say, flesh, from this day on, I'm going to dominate you in Jesus. Hallelujah. You're not going to dominate me no more. From this day on, you're not going to take me to the club no more. From this day on, I'm not going to smoke anymore. Why? Because you are crucified. You don't live anymore. You're dead. Oh God, hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah. Fear. Fear is one of the biggest obstacles that the enemy uses to take you from your victory. Because when fear comes, faith is taken away. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Let me tell you something. I have had for 32 years I've been living for the Lord. Is it 32 or 33? Yes. 33 years. I have faced many giants in my life. And I'm going to say something to you. And by the grace of God, all those giants have been slain. From the first day I met Jesus, I have been a conqueror. Why? Because the giant in me, which is called Jesus, hallelujah, is greater than the giant of this world. Hallelujah. And it's greater than my flesh. Hallelujah. Go to Galatians, please. Gal 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 Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Galatians, please. Chapter 5 and verse 16, please. Look what it says. This say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17, please. It is very easy to discern if I'm living for God or if I'm not. If I'm still alive or it's crucified. It's very easy. Pastor, how can you tell? Right there. It says this, look. 
For the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that ye cannot do the things that ye would like. In other words, if you live by the flesh, you're going to do what you want. But if you let the Holy Spirit live through you, you do what the Holy Spirit lives does hallelujah verse verse 7 uh, 18 please and i'm going to end i'm about to end it says but if you be led by the spirit you are not under the law see what i'm saying because the law only condemns the law has doesn't give you the spirit the law doesn't forgive you see the law does not give you the holy spirit so that you can live a life victorious it's not the law that was not holy it was man that was weak because of the flesh so jesus had to take care of this problem that's why he became flesh. Verse 19, please. Hallelujah. Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Verse 20, please. Hallelujah. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies. Verse 21, hallelujah. Envy, murder, drunkenness, reveling, and such like. Those are humongous giants. And if you don't slay this giant, young man, this giant is going to slay you. To me, to me, the biggest giant I confront every day is when I look in the mirror and I see this flesh that many times wants to rise up. But I have to mortify by the power of the Spirit of God. Praise God. And look what it says. I, also, I, I have told you in times past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But pastor, we're saved by grace. Yeah, I know. But the grace of God, do not use it in vain. Because there are people using the grace of God to live in sin. When the Bible says the more grace I get, the holier I want to live. Please, let's stand. The world is a great giant. The devil is a tremendous giant. But personally, for me, I don't know about you, but for me, the biggest giant I confront every single day. See, the devil is every once in a while. In a season. He says he, he tempted Christ and he left for a season. Came back. See, he does that. But this year, <laughs> every single day, I've got to get up and say, flesh, you're not going to nominate me. I'm going to nominate you in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you have given me your Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, these giants would have slain me a long time ago. But thank God, through your spirit, hallelujah, through your spirit, hallelujah, I am a conqueror. That is why your word says there is no condemnation that those that are in Christ Jesus that do not live by the flesh but by the spirit. Holy Spirit, take your people, hallelujah, and down with your power. Anoint your people, Lord. Let them understand that there is a greater giant inside of us, which is the giants of all giants. His name is Jesus, hallelujah. And with this giant named Jesus, I will conquer any giant that confronts me it can be this world it can be the devil and it can be my flesh but i will crucify my flesh for the flesh is crucified and this world is crucified to me hallelujah bless your people lord fill them with your power with your anointing lord lord give them the gift of faith to believe the impossible i thank you lord that in Jesus, this world has been slain. The devil has been slain. And my flesh has been slain. Thank you for giving me eternal life. Thank you for giving me the heads of the giants. Hallelujah. So that I will become ahead of them. Amen. Give the Lord a great big. I thank you for this opportunity. May God continue to bless everyone.
Father, we thank you for this night. Lord, we ask you to give us traveling mercies as we part ways, Lord. May your blessing and honor and grace be with us, Lord. Glory to your name. Father, we ask that you'll keep us until we join together in your name. And we'll come and worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Manny.